There was a moment there where I really thought I was going to pass out. Ready? to introduce you guys to Tariq Hoftai, who is a 12-year-old girl who lives in Coffee Village with her mother, father, three sisters, and brother. Tariq is the oldest child in her family, and because of that, she spends a lot of her time helping out at home, collecting firewood, sweeping the house, cooking food for her family, feeding the animals. Tariq is constantly pitching in so her mom has more time for other activities, like going to the market. Even though she loves attending school more than anything else, before she can do that, she has to finish her chores, which start the same way every morning with walking to collect dirty water. All right, we're taking our jerry cans down to the river to fill them up, and then we're gonna carry them all the way back up here. And you're about to see how far all the way back up is. I asked Tariq if I could go collect water with her because it's something I have never experienced myself. We talk about it a lot at Charity Water. Women in Ethiopia in particular spend hours every day walking to find and collect water. I know that, but now it's time for me to see what that's like. Rush hour traffic on the morning commute. Well, for starters, and I'm not making excuses, the walk down to the riverbed at the base of the village is both steeper and rockier than you can see here. Tariq's family lives on the very top of a hill, and though it only takes about 30 minutes to reach the bottom, when you factor in 90 degree heat and the 7,000 foot elevation, none of it is easy. What's more absurd than the walk is the water source itself. We just got down to the river to collect our water and the cows and goats are where we need to be collecting the water. This trickle of a stream is where 1,825 people come to collect their water. Women take turns here waiting in line to ladle water into their jerry can, one scoop at a time. Not only is it a source that they share with animals, but in April, May, and June, at the height of the dry season, sometimes there's no water here at all. I'm just going to dip this in here. And pour it in here. Uh, see? Once we scare away the livestock, Tariq and I fill our jerry cans with 40 pounds of water and prepare to head back up to her house on the hill. All right, you lead the way. Well, we've come about 30 feet and I'm ready to be done. At some point I'll be rolling it up the hill. The real fun part is that we're just now getting to the steep incline. Little show off. A little show off. Told her it wasn't a race. Oh, this is rough. I mean, it's, I feel like this, this part of it is one of the smaller concerns, at least for her family. It's more about health and getting some time back. It'll be less of a walk, but I just, I don't know how I wouldn't complain about this every day, twice a day. Okay, I gotta catch up. Let's try the shoulder again. I just can't get, I can't get enough air. Okay. Let's, let's go on. Let's go on.
you heard him say it. Very strong man. Very strong man. Is he going crazy? What? Hey, when did you get here? It was embarrassing, and I wasn't trying to be dramatic. I dropped to the ground as soon as we made it to Tariq's house. Sweaty, exhausted, miserable. Our translator later said, you breathe like a woman giving birth. No, no, no. I'll take it. I'll take it up to the door. This is the home stretch. We made it. All of that work provides Tariq's family with less water than they need. And it's water that makes them sick. This is the reality for thousands of families in Tigray right now, but it won't always be. Our partner organization has a plan for complete coverage in Tigray. So even though Tariq may walk for water tomorrow, next week, maybe even next month, we know that at some point her story will change. So I was the one who managed the whole operation in 8485. You helped lead all the people to yeah. Sudan yeah. for safety. Yeah.